Today I'm gonna give you about 10 tips for how I find locations. A lot of people will say that there's no real uh, good locations in a place like East Texas, but I have to argue. And after I show you the tips, we'll be shooting with Megan. Hi. <laughs> and my first tip is that just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. A perfect example of this is a recent trip to Austin, Texas. It's a big city with lots of interesting things and cool locations, but I haven't been there in about five years, so my local knowledge is a bit rusty and out of date. And what you're seeing is me going around town, looking and looking and looking and barely finding anything and getting photos when it was just a little too dark at a location that was kind of cool, but just difficult to shoot with, and I didn't bring a tripod. Next tip is familiarity, counter to what people say breeding contempt, I think can breed creativity. All the energy and action of bigger cities can sometimes misdirect your attention. Oh, and while we're here. Okay, so we're not looking at it, it's meta. Yeah. After regrouping with pizza and seeking warmth, I realized the most obvious answer might be to shoot in a hotel room, which I'm overly familiar with after this year of like 10,000 miles of travel. I felt dumb going to Austin and shooting in a hotel room, but the thing is, these photos were about my subjects, not about being in some big city. Danny and Saskia were the topics here, and I think we did something fun and different, and uh, I did get the city in a few pictures after all with this reflection. The key here was to really blast the flash so it was extremely bright because it loses light bouncing onto the window and into the camera and stuff like that. Just as I decided to shoot in a hotel in Austin, I had to be open to doing something different in this location. As you can see, there's a lot of beautiful land out here, and I had assumed I would be shooting in it. It was a little overcast. The sun came out real strong, and it was kind of difficult to work with. An obstruction that used to be where I was standing had been moved in the time since I had last shot here. And I realized that this RV was accessible and still interesting and I decided it was also a good thing to shoot with. I had to go with the flow of the shoot because I had to discard my assumptions. Make a plan A, but be ready to ditch it. I find that having some kind of loose concept going in definitely helps, but it often isn't where the shoot winds up. This eight x 10 photo and these shots on Ektachrome, I think deliver more than I had anticipated getting by just shooting in the field including these Portra 400 shots, a film I still kind of continue to struggle with. But hey, Polaroid's still looking great. And a tip I really need to work on, and have improved with some, is scouting. Scouting doesn't always mean driving around in a car. In this case, it can mean going to a park with a friend and shooting some photos while you're on a photo walk. I didn't get anything profound here, but it was super useful and now I've got a lay of the land and this park is being developed too. So it's gonna have some more interesting stuff as it continues to be built up. Oh, this is cool. Ashley and I also stumbled upon this back way into a parking lot that's at an adjoining business. The business itself isn't like super worthy of taking photos or at least for my type of work, but this little area back here was pretty interesting and this wasn't breaking and entering. It was an open parking lot, so yeah. I'll have a brief aside on that in a moment after we go over a few more tips. Our next tip involves something that your subjects can actually help you with, which is to take suggestions on locations. I'd never been to this park before that Kate and I were shooting at, but I decided to go with her advice. She said it was nice. She had just been swimming out there, I think. And we had shot in a park a little bit before this. There's like a park area behind this, but I was immediately drawn to the water and it, though it was getting a little chilly, she was really into going into the water. So I went oh, with it. Oh, I love it. that. Like that, just like that. Arms up a little bit more. The sun cut under the cloud cover as it was setting for this glorious golden light dancing across the water, which actually worked pretty well with Portra 400 with me for once, probably because of the golden light. I enjoyed a lot of these, and some of these might have been on uh, Ektachrome too. But now because I listen to Kate, I have another spot I can fall back on when I'm in this area, or if I need certain things it offers. There were some trees and trails and stuff around, so a lot of options. But don't think you have to go on a hike to get a good location. It's been said that Ansel Adams himself rarely went that far off path for all of his glorious landscape photographs. 
and you notice that playground right there. Yeah, that's how far off path we were on this place that looks like the middle of the forest where I went with Allison recently. This was another suggestion. We had talked about where to shoot. She had just been around this area recently and said it had some nice stuff and I followed her out and despite this looking like a bit of a hike, I think my car was almost within eye shot. I almost could have locked my car from where we were shooting. Unfortunately, I lost two rolls of film from this due to a focusing screen problem, but at least we still got a few good ones in here, including these shots on Lomo 400 with my Hasselblad. But you don't always have to look for beautiful forest scenes with beautiful forest fairies in them. You can keep your mind in the gutter too. Not far from my house is this big drainage ditch. Yeah, it looks definitely like 1998. And I brought another Allison out here to try it out. Get a picture of the ditch. This is where we find like some incriminating stuff and it leads to a movie. Also real quick, I have to give a shout out to my patrons listed here on screen. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel. It helps so much and it's a lot of fun. I try to share little BTS bits on the Patreon feed as well. And you get a discount when I put out zines, which might be coming soon. Probably have to look to do it. So yeah, thank you. You don't always have to have a beautiful or perfect or even ideal location to have something interesting to work with. And I think this area exemplifies that, especially as the light changes and gets better. It has a mysterious allure to me that appeals to a lot of what I like to show in my work. It's very East Texas in a way that isn't as necessarily degrading as you might think it sounds like. And here's how I planned my shoot with Megan. I mapped it. I knew of this certain water tower location in Tyler, Texas. I mapped out the location and decided to check out the street view. I did this with just, as you can see, a very simple Google map search. There was this church on a corner here that I've always been disappointed didn't have like a neon light on this cross. And I always avoided it because of that. But I looked further down the street on here just to see if I could get other angles at that water tower and found a very interesting environment. Good enough. Now there's a good chance that just about anything I shoot in this area has been shot a million times by local photographers also looking for anything to shoot. And that's fine with me because I don't get possessive of locations. I think it's important for you, no matter where you shoot, no matter what location you have, to make it your own. It needs to show your own signature and your own style, and that kind of happen that happens naturally as well. Cool. Beautiful. Hey, so <laughs> respectful. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> That's nice. And let's hear it for their most respectful cat caller I've ever encountered. Thank you, dude. I try not to stay married to a concept or an idea or even shooting style if I don't have to. Sometimes it can be good to narrow it down. But this is my first shoot with Megan and that is usually a feel things out and learn about the person session. And so that's what I did. I used a flash on some of these but also I wanted to shoot and use some of the natural light since we're at sunset. I try hard not to get stuck in one spot which I have a bad habit of. So we shot around this area even though it was much darker than I anticipated, although I could have checked that on Google Earth on a PC. I just didn't have that available for this video. You can actually get an idea of the location and direction of shadows. That's one of my most comfortable heels for you. I think we got some really good photos at this place I couldn't map, which enforces the force yourself to walk around thing. Now I find it interesting that I shot a roll of Cinestill 800T thinking that somehow it was a roll of Ektachrome 100. So I shot it at 100. So I'd intended to shoot it at 400. So I reasoned that maybe if I pulled it one stop and developed it in ECN2 for slightly lower contrast, that maybe I could salvage some kind of image. By the way, you've been looking at Portrait 400, Fuji Superior Premium 400, and Lomo Metropolis. But anyway, this Cinestill developed at 100 had no right to turn out like these photos did. This is Cinestill 800T shot at 100, pulled one stop in ECN2 chemistry. Uh, I have to try this again. Have you ever done that? Because I'm kind of blown away, honestly. So my last tips and parting advice is to don't gatekeep your locations. 
don't protect your locations like there's some trade secret unless they're private property or something like that. Also speaking of private property, I don't believe in breaking and entering for a location. There's almost always a way for you to get to that location legally and running with lights is like super hard. <laughs> 